Okay, not what you want to see, but sometimes when you drive the car, the check engine light comes on on the dash. Lights up like a Christmas tree on this one. It's got like three little lights and a message that come on. So I plugged in the scan tool to see what the fault is. You say three lights, it's actually two lights. A spanner, a check engine light, the spanner, and that all came on at the same time. So I plugged in the scan tool. There it is. PW10. Chemshaft position, actuate a circuit open. Sorry for my shaky hands. The tab that you usually pull out to take the camshaft actuator. Uh, wire plug connector off. There wasn't one, so it was just like pushed onto it. So I think hopefully that's all it is. It's vibrated loose. And if that's the case, I'll just cable tie it on. Because like I said, it's already broke. The only way around that would be to get a piggyback wire and loom or part of a harness from somewhere, so hopefully that's all it is. So I'm going to check the variable valve timing solenoid and see if it's getting power, if it's getting a controlled ground, and see if the uh, solenoid's actually working. This bit here is the solenoid, that bit right there, just next to the oil cap on this car. And as you can see, the tab that's supposed to lock it on and in place has broken off. To I'm hoping all it is is that it's rattled loose, but we'll test it out and make sure it was working. Okay, using the Unity UT81B again, got the common side is connected to the battery negative, direct onto the battery negative. I'm going to use the back probe here that's connected to the scope and multimeter side. I'm just going to slide it in here As we can see it's battery voltage on that side Now I'll move it to the other side And it's also battery voltage Choir is showing 2.5 volts Just because that's coming from the engine ECU over here and it's sending a bias voltage all the way down the wire right here so it can monitor if the wire is broken faulty the white wire, when I put it into the white wire there I get full battery voltage you see that? that's in the white wire you see there, 14.2 ok, the next test, I'm not using the multimeter at all but I'm using the back probe and pen and the end of the multimeter is connected to battery positive, right here. Okay, so anytime I touch a good ground, the test light will light. So I'll leave it in there. Well, that's when I switched it off and started it again and I think when you do that it does a pre-check after a few seconds you can use a noid light instead of doing it this way and it should work just the same way lights up after a few seconds stays on for about a second that means we're getting a control Now I'm going to touch this test light to a ground and see if we can make it change the engine tone. And it's not. It's not. So it's like the pilly isn't, the phaser pilly is not doing anything. But because we've got voltage on both sides when it's plugged in, it means the electrical circuit must be working inside. When I plug it onto the battery positive with the test light, it lights up when I switch it on, meaning it's getting center ground 
than the engine ECU. So it's being controlled to be switched on to make this work. But if I give it power, it might just be there's not enough flow through this. So I'm going to change this out for a lead and see if I click now that I know which wire is which. We could shoot, we're fairly safe to do this. I'll try it with a lead without this because this is only going to allow like 200 milliamps. It may not be enough to work the solenoid, which could be more like 1,000 milliamps. I'll try, I'll try it that way. Okay, so connecting the multimeter wire back up. Now we'll quickly join this onto a ground, see if we get an engine changes um, tone as the valve timing changes. Nothing. No change at all. Although, I think I can hear... I can definitely feel it click. But it's not changing the engine tone. So it's getting its control. And if I make it work, nothing's happening. It could be a faulty defaser pulley or something in the, the solenoid itself that's clicking but not actually working. So I need to do further work on this to see what's going on. Should be able to do that and you'll hear the engine change its tone. I got the solenoid out for the variable valve time and this is what it looks like like I say the wire that clips onto here the plugs broken a bit so it doesn't actually snap over this lock the main thing is when I activated it I could hear this clicking but there was no change and I don't know if you can tell about that solenoid is absolutely full a crap and it's got it's totally choked up. You can't really get this to focus, maybe that's a bit bad. That. See that? It's like swarf. Pure shite. Gunge. So, when I clean this, not, not surprisingly it didn't work then when you look at that crap. I'll give it a good wash out. But I'm glad the gauze was there, so it's done its job. Okay, I'll have a shake it. Oh, I can keep the camera still. It's not making any sounds, like it, the plunger's not moving inside. Don't know whether it's meant to. But it's solid, maybe it's got crap on the inside. I'll try and activate it, get it cleaned out. There you go, I just got it set on to continuous on this. Uh, it's actually an injector tester. You get it set on option 4 which was continuously pulsing it on and off. And yeah, I just connected to the battery there using the injector tester but I'm not it's not an injector. But because it's pulse width modulated I thought I'd try it on this. See what it's like with the on and off and it seems to be coping fine. I think it's actually okay. I'm hoping that when I, now that I've cleaned out the gores, it'll run okay. Okay, I had a fault before. When I was checking for faults, I used the OBD2 uh, side of the scan tool rather than the, the manufacturer side of the scan tool. I had one fault, and that was the solenoid for the variable valve timing circuit was short or open. Now that I've gone into the manufacturer side of it, there's a whole bunch of faults. Right. So I'm gonna, I've not cleared these on this side. I'm going to have to do that first, I think. Yeah. It's all basically a lot of the same faults. So let's try and clear them. I think I need to switch the car off and put just the ignition on. Yeah. So. 
Let's try that quick. It's one of those cars that don't have a key, it's a key card. Okay, faults may still exist. Let's see what they are. Yep. <laughs> All of them. One second, I think the, the ignition needs to be on and I haven't got it on. Let me try this. Again, we hold the start stop for long enough. We should put the ignition on. Nope. Let's try again. It's supposed to be like 10 seconds holding this key in. Puts the ignition on. And I'm not getting that for some reason. Let's take the key out. Put it back in. There we go. It did something, but the ignition is still not on. Will it do it again if I press it and hold it again? There we go. Okay. I just had to take the card out. The key card. Uh, I'll try it again. Let's try and clear these fault codes. Continue. Clearing codes. Clear codes completed, which is good because I didn't get that far before. Okay, I put my window up because of the noise outside. I've got one now refrigerant pressure sensor, which is totally fine. I do mean to do the aircon, but sorry about my hand in the way the whole time there. Still getting new to uh, this filming. Might invest in a better camera and stuff eventually, but it's all new to me and I mean to improve. If you've got any comments on how I can improve it, any suggestions at all are totally welcome because I want it to look more professional. Anyway, that's that done. So now I'll start the car. Right, there's it started. So what I'm going to do now is come out of here and go into the live data, which I guess is data. I could probably have done a function test with this. You know, function test it. Let's see what it is that I'm more interested in here. I'm more interested in the phaser pulley for the valve timing. I think I've gone past it. Camshaft phaser setting inactive. Camshaft offset control. Not exactly sure what that means. So, why, uh, what I wanted to do was get what it was looking for the position to be and what it actually is. There we go. Now it's going up to... I'm not getting anything that's suggesting it's doing anything other than the percentage. That doesn't mean it's moving at all. All I know is it's trying to control it, which I found out earlier anyway. Okay. I'm not... Okay, I'm not finding anything that's really going to help me by looking at live data. Looking at this. Hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of information, but it's not going to help me. What I wanted to do is, like, sometimes you can see actual advancing degrees versus um, commanded advance or retarded in degrees and I, I wanted to see that they were matching each other but I'm not getting that option in this car which is a, a bit of a pain. Um, let's just scroll up again. Yeah I can't see it at all. But I did have a an O2 sensor downstream and that seems to have a, a voltage that I would expect. So I'm convinced that is working. I just don't have anything to help me with the camshaft phaser. I've got zero. Is that the percentage that it's switching on and off? Or is that how much it's moving? Camshaft offset control. Inactive. Okay, that's not changing at all. So what I'll do, just a thought, if I check for codes again, I'm not, it's not thinking there's a fault with it. I could see 
using the injector tester that it's working you can blow through it and then it's choked when you don't blow through it when it's not getting power to me it it's like the solenoids working but when I fitted it and did the test again where I gave it a ground to see if I could hear a change in the engine tone I didn't and I'm sure I've done it on this type of car before and you could really hear a click change to in fact any car I've done it on I could hear a change to the engine tone I don't know if that's a good way of testing it or not like that it's worked in the past uh, I think at this point I can say the wiring's okay the solenoid appears to be okay definitely given the engine oil and filter a change will be a good idea looking at the crap that was around the gores um, although I think at this point it's looking like I'm gonna have to change the variable valve time and phaser pulley fit a new one and see how I get on and uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on this if you've ever had a same issue but I'll, I think I'll drive it first maybe change the oil and drive it and see if the light comes back on and if it doesn't log it as a fault code in the future maybe it is working and you're just not going to be able to shut it out and get much of a difference but it's uh, you know when, it, when I give it a ground to activate the solenoid in the car without running it might just be that it's not a valid way of testing it but at least I know I've tested the wiring and the solenoid. I did find that the solenoid was choked and I hope that was going to be enough. Uh, I'm blocking it. It um, doesn't look like it's going to help in this case. I'll see. I'll just see how I get on. Uh, if you've got any ideas though, just leave them in the comments.